here today to celebrate the homegoing of Arthur Macon Walker, affectionately known by half the world as Ethy. Uh, born 91 years ago, either on January 1st, 1929, or on December 30th, 1928, uh, depending on who you talk to. He's one of the few men I've ever known that had two birthdays. I don't know how that works. But it depends on if you're talking to Social Security or to his mom. Because Flora Bell, his mom, would always say, I guess I should know the day I was there. And I can just hear her saying that right now. Uh, Pop was what we began to call him after he acquired more grandkids than he could count. And it was, uh, he was a true North Georgia Renaissance man. And when you hear the people that he knew and the, and the circles in which he traveled, uh, I think you'll understand. As a boy, he roamed the woods with his, his faithful bulldog, Heavy. He uh, learned the value of hard work and on the family farm and began his schooling and understanding females through uh, the aggravation of his two sisters, uh, Ruth and Jesse, who are with us uh, today via uh, video. So you guys make sure to, uh, to know I'm going to aggravate you when I see you next time. As a young man, he went to college. He served his country as a supply sergeant in the United States Army in a base in Japan in the Korean War. He was awarded four medals and even survived native Japanese drum cooking. He also learned to fly uh, not too far from here at Tokoa Airport and earned his own pilot's license in spite of his repeated aggravation of his flight instructor. You see, Pop used to love to buzz the cows in the, in the fields nearby, in the pastures nearby, and he learned flying a plane, a little biplane, and they play follow the leader, and uh, he often got in trouble for flying under the train trussles over there on the other side of town. He flew uh, important people like R.G. Letourneau. Uh, he was one of Paul Anderson's main uh, rides back and forth to college. He ran a restaurant, a donut shop, managed the dining room at the country club nearby, nearby, where he encouraged another young man named James Brown uh, to quit working for him as a busboy, and uh, he probably could make it full-time in music, which he did. Uh, he married BJ and learned to live in an understanding way with two beautiful and headstrong daughters, one of which is my wife, so I'll pay for that sentence later. And he enjoyed square dancing uh, for several years. He worked and retired from Martha White, where he was a district and also state manager, statewide manager. He uh, promoted a lot of the uh, country music shows as part of Martha White Foods and marketing plan, where he uh, got to frequent the back halls of the Grand Ole Opry. And he was uh, actually friends with Tennessee Ernie Ford, Minnie Pearl, and Johnny Cash. Uh, some of the stories he could tell were amazing about those things. He loved the city of Tacoa. He helped uh, raise money for the high school here where his girls attended. And he uh, helped with annual country music shows, raising money for the school, cooked pancakes with the Civitan Club, and, uh, and sold fruitcakes with them as well. He faced his, probably his greatest organizing challenge when uh, Betty Jean suffered with lung cancer, but he handled that just like he handled everything else with grace and strength and the help of his daughters. Most importantly, though, he never met a stranger. He was every person's friend that he met. He made sure everybody that he knew knew that they were valuable in his eyes and that he was their potential friend. He modeled that to daughters, to sons-in-laws, and in a way that he could just make you know that your life counted just by a smile that he gave you, the little twinkle that he had in his eye when he's up to no good. He uh, had a wonderful gift come into his life. Uh, a few years later, her name was Alice, and we saw the light and, uh, and the joy of life. <laughs> He'd be laughing right now. And we saw the joy of life flare up in his eyes again. Uh, they were precious together. Uh, Pop and Alice were precious together. 
And they were a wonderful team, uh, especially in the kitchen. They spent the last 30 years ago uh, crafting and blending two families together, welcoming a horde of grandkids and even some great-grands in the process. He took her to many Coke conventions. He was a collector and to many army reunions. And Nanny's favorite thing uh, that Pop would say to her was, I love you, I can't live without you, but I can't do anything with you. <laughs> and we all learned a lot about love and about second chances, watching Pop and Nanny's at, uh, relationship develop over the years. Through uh, good times and rough times, we saw their unconditional love for each other and their love for us. And they honored their creator in the middle of it all. I am deeply blessed to have been a part of this family for over 40 years. And uh, he, was, he was a father figure to me as well. Uh, I have great memories, great stories, <clears throat> great stories, some better than others. But they're all pop, and you'll always be precious to all of us. We love you, Pop. understand the sorrow that you're calm within the storm I don't carry it alone and you're so close when I can feel you I don't have to be
trade. What a beautiful reminder of why as we gather here this afternoon that it's a celebration. That we don't come here because we've lost Mr. Walker. Because when something is lost, that means we don't know where it is. And in fact, we know exactly where he is. The scripture says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And yet we also come knowing that there's a loss, L-O-S-S. That no one can take his place. That he was dad, that he was husband, that he was pop, that he was a friend, that he was a man who knew God and loved God. And I think about that song, and we may wonder, how is it you can live 91 years and see all the ups and downs of life, see wars, see struggles, see sickness, lose a spouse, lose other loved ones, and yet still have a confidence, have a clarity in your life, have a compassion that's contagious? The answer to that is simply the fact that Mr. Walker knew Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. For over 16 years, I've had the joy of being the pastor at Ebenezer. And as I watch Miss Alice and Mr. Arthur come in, you know, there are many folks who, who come to church. And, and there are some that, that are very vocal and are always have something they want to talk to me about. It, it's always encouraging, you know, always a word. Maybe not sometimes. But this couple didn't have to say a word. Alice and Evie, they just had a smile. They had a presence about them that wasn't them was the Lord. As I've been praying over the last couple of days and the Lord took me to Psalm number one. And the first words of the Psalms where the writer is describing a man who walks with God, here's what he writes. He said, blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of, sin of sinners or sit in the seat of mockers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on this law, he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither, and whatever he does prospers. I think about Mr. Walker and that mighty tree, that life of 91 years, that, that all the way up to the end, I, I told the family earlier when I would do birthday calls year after year, and, and it would have the date on there, and it would have their, the age on there. And many times I would look and think, okay, our computer system's messed up again. This man can't be 91 or 90 or 89 or 88 or whatever the number might be. But yet, in fact, he was. And isn't it amazing that not only was his physical health strong up until this last battle, but to know that his emotional and his spiritual health were strong. Because the Lord wasn't just someone in the distance for Mr. Walker. No, Jesus was someone he knew personally. There had been a time in his life where he had surrendered his will to God's will and his way to God's will. Miss Alice, I think about the beautiful testimony of the way that he loved Miss BJ and the way he loved you. And he knew that he was double blessed because Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived, said, He who finds a wife finds what is good and receives favor from the Lord. He had God's favor twice. And that's certainly because, like Adam in the book of Genesis, the Lord said it wasn't good for man to be alone. He knew that need to be alone. Someone had to take care of him and keep eye on him, and so we thank you for that. And today as we gather here in this place, I'm, I'm reminded of the Old Testament, how oftentimes when God's people would experience a great miracle of God, they would build an altar there. And in the Old Testament, the Lord was clear that the altar they built would be unhewn stone, just stones that were stacked up. And it would be obvious when you pass by and saw those stones stacked there that someone had placed them there. They, they weren't a natural formation, and yet you wouldn't know the story of the stones someone told me. So soon in a few hours there'll be a marker here that will be uncovered that has his name and two years on it, his birth year and his death year and then a dash in the middle. And family and friends it's our honor and our responsibility to come to this place and to tell the story. The story not just of the name and not just of the man but a story of family and a story of faith, a story of hope, a story of love, a story of Brother Ben reminded us a moment ago of second chances. And what an amazing gift that is. And how blessed we are to have had the treasure of knowing Mr. Walker. And, and family, as I think about him, there were two words that kept coming to my mind. Two words, and, and all of us probably had these similar words that came to mind. The first word is the word smile. As Ben reminded us a few moments ago, he did have a way of smiling that wasn't just kind of a, a slight smile. It was a contagious smile. It was a, a big smile. A smile with his eyes and his whole face that would light up. Miss Alice, I remember when Melissa and I had the joy of visiting with him even there in the rehab center. And you could
could tell he just got finished and was was not feeling super great and was sore and the food wasn't what he was used to and the place wasn't what he was used to and yet even as he saw us turn the corner and they just finished with it we waited a few moments and the, the therapist let us come into the little room where he was waiting there and, and sitting for just a few moments and he looked up and, and that face lit up that smile i'm reminded of what the scripture says in describing this not slight but this bright smile in the book of job it's interesting that job in chapter 29 is describing all that he's been through and, and the response of people to him and of course job trusted the lord and walked with god yet was was also also was the one who went through so many difficulties had so much taken away from him and yet he continued to trust the lord and in chapter 29 verse 24 the scripture says that job wrote these words he said when i smiled at them they scarcely believed it the light of my face was precious to them about Mr. Arthur and I think about that smile. His family and friends, we know what that smile was like, the depth of that smile. And it wasn't just a casual thing, it was really a, a radiant thing. It was an encouraging and an inspiring smile that he had. It was a smile. But then I also think family about the word kindness. There are a lot of people who can smile and they look pleasant, but you don't know, are they, are they really mean it? Are they really kind? Do they really have compassion? Indeed, Mr. Walker had Alice, you know, he had a kindness. He, he wanted to serve you and the family and serve others. That, that was his heart. And, and I think about what the scripture tells us in Galatians chapter 6, verse 10. It says, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people. And I'm reminded that the goodness and the smile, the kindness and the compassion of Mr. Walker was not in himself alone. It was because of Christ in him. And I know the greatest joy to his heart would be if there's anyone who hears this message right now, anyone who's reflecting on his life, and if you don't know Christ as Lord and Savior, the greatest honor you could give him would be that you place your faith in Christ and Christ alone. Because our confidence is not in his goodness, is not even in the sacrifice to our nation, which we're so humbly grateful for, is not just in the great family and friends and the integrity of his life. No, our comfort and our confidence today is in the cross, is in Jesus Christ. The only way to a right relationship with God. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us in the book of John, chapter number 14, that Jesus was talking to his disciples and said he was going to prepare a place for us and so that where he is, we can also be. And one of the disciples, who might be like some of us, honestly, at times, said, Lord, okay, that sounds great. I'm with you. But where are you going? Because we don't know where you're going. If we don't know where you're going, we don't know the way. And Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through there was a time in Evie's life when he recognized that in all of his valor, in all of his victories, in all of his humanity, in all of his humility, in all of his great accolades, and even in his struggles, that there was no way he could make it to God on his own. So he trusted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. The Bible says whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And today, if you don't know Christ as Lord and Savior, this family begs you in the honor of Mr. Walker. Place your faith in Christ. Pray a simple prayer of surrender just between you and the Lord. I say, Lord Jesus, you died for me. You were buried. You rose again. Come into my life. Forgive me of my sin. Lord, I want my life to reflect you like Mr. Walker's did. And then sometime today, you could shoot a text or even before you leave this place in a few moments, grab one of these family members by the hand and say, you know what? I gave my life to Christ. And I promise you there's no greater honor you could give Mr. Walker or his family. I'm reminded the scripture tells us in 1 Thessalonians that Paul was writing to believers who at times had, had questions and struggles like we do. They were wondering about their loved ones who were dying. They fully expected that Jesus would return before they would bury their loved ones, and yet believers were dying. And they were left trying to figure this out. And Paul wrote in 1 Thessalonians 4, and he said this. He said, we grieve, but not as those without hope. And it goes on to talk about the resurrection of Jesus and the second coming of Jesus. And he goes on to remind us the fact that because of our faith in Christ, we do have sorrow. The family has sorrow. But because of our faith in Christ, when we pass, that sorrow gives way to hope. The tears are overcome with joy. Not because of wishful thinking, but because of the promises of God's word that are powerful and personal. And then he concludes that section in 1 Thessalonians 4 and says, Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Today, as we leave this place in a moment, I pray that we would be encouraged that we've been together, that we've celebrated Mr. Walker's life. There's no way in a few moments together on an afternoon like this we could capture it all, but we all have memories. We all have moments. 
moments and memories that we now see as perhaps miracles that God gave us, that we can hold on to, that we can treasure. But may we not only be encouraged, but as we leave this place, may our encouragement turn into inspiration. May we be inspired to live our life for the Lord and for others the way Mr. Walker did. May we remember what the scripture says we grieve, but not as those without hope. And our hope is in Christ himself. So Lord, we come to you and we thank you that even as we feel the breeze, that we're reminded of your spirit that moves in our hearts and in our lives. And Lord, we thank you for that peace that passes understanding. We thank you for that love and that grace and that mercy that's indescribable, and yet we know what it's like and we experience it because of the, the smile and the kindness, the touch, the concern, the impact of lives like Arthur Walker. And I pray, Lord, that not only have we been encouraged, but I pray we would be inspired to live our life of faith, to care about others, to be kind, and to show even with the countenance of our face and understanding that there's something more to life than just what we see. The Lord, our faith is in you. You are the living word. We behold the glory of God through you, Lord Jesus. And we thank you that through one another, through godly lives like Arthur Walker, we also see the grace and the mercy, the indescribable richness of who you are, Father, become tangible and real. Lord, we thank you, we praise you. Bless this family. Surround them with presence and peace that only you can give. We pray in Jesus' name. We have a, one more song for you guys. Um, and it's all the, from all the cousins, from all the, all the grandkids. So come on up here, grandkids. Uh, the first song we were saying was talking about lived as Christ. Now he has gained what we promised him. Everything that was promised. So this song is about hope. Hope that we all have. And I want to encourage you to sing with us if you know it. It's a Chris Tomlin song called I Will Rise. It's beautiful. But if you know it, please. There's a place I've come to know Though my heart and flesh may fail There's an anchor for my soul I can say shall be my eyes. Jesus has overcome, and the grave is overwhelmed. The victory